in aloe. The impact era of undergrad, solving mysteries in the shallow. I need it more, I need it less. A forest or a conduit, paint the floor or sail the red. Explore pastoral sentiment. I thought about those things that you said. I'm sorry, I was so flippant. I need it more, I need it less and less. Collage, collage, collage. There is no trick, just a glue stick and a National Geographic. I cling to the scrap of a shark like a sweater full of static. Turn the light out, cause it's bright out underneath the white out moon. Construction paper, see you later. We got nothing else to prove. I need it more, I need it less. A forest or a conduit. Paint the floor or sail the red. Explore pastoral sentiment. I thought about those things that you said. I'm sorry I was so flippant. I need it more. I need it less. I need it more. I must confess. I need it more. I need it less and less.
to Sister Tits on CKUW 95.9 FM, bringing the issues of youth in and from care from their lives to your minds. Hi, I'm Tom Tom. I'm here with Serenity. This is is a white highlight for this week. Article. Hello, everyone. Welcome to System Kids. You're listening on CKUW 95.9. We are Sonia and Kaylee, practicum social work students at Voices, Manitoba Youth and Care, located on the third floor of 61 Juno Street. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We also have a special guest. Um, she was here with us last week as well. That's Shalee, or Shalee, Shalee, yeah. and she's gonna join in on the conversation when she feels, um, you know, that she wants to. Um, but without further ado, we're gonna get started. Um, we wanted to acknowledge that yesterday was Remembrance Day and thought we should acknowledge, remember, and honor those who have lost their lives in war, those who have served us, and those who continue to serve us. Because of you, we have our freedom. Um, before we actually dive right into the show, we're going to do a little icebreaker as normal. Um, I'm going to start off by asking Kaylee, if you could be a superhero, what would be your special power? Well... Um, I'm kind of a superhero fanatic. Um, so for me, I think that if I was to be a superhero, my superpower would be if I see something or I learn something that instantly I am like completely competent or like I completely know how to do it. So if I watch like a ninja movie, I'm going to instantly know those ninja moves how about you okay so let me think about this one if i could ever be a superhero there's so many powers to choose from <laughs> right i think just the ability to uh make people feel happy kind of like a on off switch someone said switch on the switch turn on the switch make them happy instantly I think you do a pretty good job of that already <laughs> Blushing over here. Mm. How about Shlee? I think I was along the same lines as I think I'm along the same lines as um you, where you're like, um the whole empathy thing, like making other people feel good, making them happy, loving them, taking away their pain. <laughs> yeah, that kind of stuff. <laughs> That's superpower. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So we're going to give you guys a summary of last week. Last week we introduced to you all what it means to be or feel powerless as you think here. And some of the ideas we shared with you all are barriers um, where little to no control of anything, whether that be time, resources, access to food, water, shelter, clothing, loss of identity, lack of public transportation, knowledge, education, and permanency. And this week we want to branch off from the tree of powerlessness and get you thinking and equipped with tools and uh, tools to use or share as youth in care or for those who work with youth in care to feel powerful. So for today's show, we'll be talking to you all about empowerment and how you are able to use tools to help yourself and others learn strategies to feel powerful. We have come to know two very special ladies. Um, they joined our Voices fam um, a few weeks ago and we actually got them to pre-record the rights highlight that we're going to share with you all today. And without further ado, technology goes in our way. <laughs> we'll go right ahead. Oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we we uh, yeah. So here it is. This is a white highlight for this week. 
Article number 30 of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child States. Indigenous children have the right to speak their language and enjoy their culture. So, Tum Tum, why is this right important for youth in care? Because it's important to talk with family and grandma's language. Sometimes grandmas do not speak English. Yeah, so it's important to be able to talk with them, right? So that was just a little piece of the really eventful and, uh, how would we, it was an interesting experience. Yeah, and these are two lovely ladies that they sure are. really express how much I just, they want to be on the radio. Yeah, and, and we, it, it didn't sound like it was super loud, so I just want to repeat the right for anyone who maybe didn't hear it. Mm-hmm. So we chose right 30 from the united nations conventions of the rights of the child and right 30 says that indigenous children have the right to speak their language and enjoy their culture which also includes religion and spirituality so i just wanted to branch off from there and just talk a little bit more about language and culture and how they both interconnect with one another so you know as we all know the saying goes knowledge is power And being able to learn and practice your language and culture creates that bond between expressions and meanings. So what I mean by that is language is more than just grammar and words. It is the way that, you know, individuals use the tool of language to express or create meanings and expressions to maintain relationships in their lives. So that, to me, at least, means culture is what allows us or glues people together to live in a framework of communication through shared meanings. So I want to share a personal experience or... Yeah, personal experience as to why this is important. Um, when you think about language or you think about English, um, when you interpret something in English into another language, there's most likely not always a direct English equivalency for words or expressions. So, for example, medical, legal, or, or other types of expressions, terms, are not always, I guess, you cannot always directly interpret that word. Um When I completed my first undergrad degree, many professors, indigenous professors would say things like, um, you know, whether they're Ojibwe, Dakota, um, Cree, Métis, they would say things like, well, in English you say hello, but in Ojibwe you would say anin, which means I see your light when you greet someone. And I thought that was powerful. Yeah. That's Mm -hmm. interesting. And there's also, I mean, if you even just, you know, Google research different ways to say things in different languages, you're kind of like... And when I even, I had to come reconfirm this, right? So when I looked at anin, there's different ways of actually saying that as well. You can say ani, so you kind of drop off the N. And it just, you know, how beautiful it is to say that. I see your light when you see someone Mm -hmm. instead of just saying hello. And hello, I mean, that's how we kind of just greet someone in everyday English. But I just thought the power of language is, I mean, language is powerful. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, that's, that's interesting because... I've I've heard something similar about the word namaste. Yeah. Right? What right. is namaste? So namaste, you know, the, the immediate thing that comes to your head is you put your hands together and you say namaste. But in, I'm going to totally... Is it in Hindi? It... It's either... I don't know. It, 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 I, I do believe so. And it's kind of like one of those things that you say when you go to yoga. Yeah. It's and like, they're like, namaste. Yeah. yeah. It means... it could. I think it can be interpreted as a greeting yeah, like or it's, a goodbye. It's, it's a hello I think or a thank you. Like the and a goodbye. Yeah. 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 Um, so th- it's, it's, I bow to the divine within you and it's used within Hinduism. But I, like, I have a thing on my phone that says namaste. And anytime people see that, I always hear some sort of like funny story or like what namaste means to them, because Mm -hmm. it's one of those words that can take on so many different meanings for the listener or the speaker. Yeah, that's what I've heard it means. It means the divine honors me and yeah you or something yeah it's beautiful though so anin and namaste yeah. two new words yeah and to kind of just tie that together with why this is important especially for youth in care focusing on primarily on indig- indigenous youth in care um i think it means that learning understanding processing and preserving your language culture and customs this is you know helps establish that base or that solid foundation of identity of knowing mm-hmm. yourself and in turn knowing your heritage where you came from 
Um, and that will help you in educating and teaching those around you. So essentially, it is proclaiming your power through language and culture. Wow. Yeah, that's a that's a great and that's a great write up. Well done. I so too. <laughs> what about you, Kaylee? What do you it. feel, or why you feel this right is important um, for youth in care? To so know? Yeah, mine is pretty much the same or similar. Um, for me, I feel it's important because being connected to your culture and identity is important to feel whole as a person. Um, it not feeling whole um, will affect a person or an individual's ability to function well, to get things done on time, um, properly, you know, with everything included. Um, yeah, so it affects your function to, <laughs> it affects your ability to function um, and create connections, thus reducing isolation and power. So I know that was basically, that was a lot, but basically I I think that language and your culture is your sense of identity or is a big part of your sense of identity. And without that part, it's a lot more difficult to form connections. Um, and that is kind of something that we've been seeing with our participants with, at Voices um, and, and seeing kind of what the result of you know, if we're going back to colonization and losing your language and your intergenerational culture, trauma. intergenerational trauma, absolutely. Any of those things, um, those all go back to your identity and lack of identity due to, you know, everything that happened. Um, and not to take those lightly in any way, but just the, the language and culture specifically, without them, we don't feel whole. So, right. Connecting past generations, history, identity, due to so much being lost, um, including your languages and communities, um, and now having, it, like, and now being a future where we're all about increasing our rights and increasing our awareness and, um, like, increasing our power. And so, you know, that's, I think, what Voices really tries to do is help youth find their power through their voice i want to just add to that like you know language can also be not necessarily verbal you know what oh, i mean it, it yeah. can be nonverbal. Nonverbal. Mm -hmm. it can be um through art um could be through song without lyrics mm -hmm. um and and that i mean even with just focusing on even just um let's say indigenous cultures there's a lot of like you know <laughs> history and meaning towards beadworking, moccasins, um, and all those types of, like, I guess, artistic mm -hmm. type of... Um, it's very intuitive. Right. So mm -hmm. language doesn't necessarily have to be just verbal. Um, there's just a lot of nonverbal or just visual um, to language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah, there's... What do they say? Like, 80% of messages that are received are from nonverbal, so yeah. how you move your face your how you move language. your body yeah. exactly your yes. little hums and ha's and yeah. you know um how even how you position yourself to somebody mm. or you know they say you know s smiling with your eyes right yeah the way you a person's tone as well mm -hmm. but some people like people say my voice sounds kind of harsh or like i speak with conviction but that doesn't mean i'm like angry yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you yeah, know sure. so it's like miss there's like a fine line between misreading people and <clears throat> what they're actually <laughs> yeah yeah well I like I was a waitress at one time and I have a lot of friends that did waitressing mm -hmm. and one of the biggest comments I ever got from my customers and also like my friends that were waitresses um like one of the biggest things is you should smile more oh, <laughs> oh. okay yeah yeah when somebody tells you you should smile more you feel like you're being judged you feel oh, yeah or like if you're having a really crappy day and somebody's right. like oh did you or you did and you didn't put your makeup on somebody's or like, when are it, you sick yeah are you sick or you look tired or you yes are you sick or you look tired yeah. if you're not wearing makeup you can be <laughs> happy and look tired yeah and i i just want to point out i think this this is kind of an yeah um 
all those examples and the many, many examples, many more examples we could come up with, those are all examples of removing, reducing, or whatever, someone's power. It's affecting their character. It's going after their character. Um, Even just small comments like, you should smile more. Those there, that makes somebody feel much more worth less than I they actually had before. found out this year that when you should someone it's actually a cognitive distortion so it creates an unconscious feeling of being feeling bad about yourself when you should someone yeah like oh like you, you should. should yeah it's an unconscious judgment to make you feel bad I see really you know that kind of re- reminds me of um we had a it's psychology a, it's like called cognitive distortions or something interesting yeah. I say you should a lot because I love to Everybody give ad- well, like yeah. advice and, and I'm always like you should to kind of make mm. it more polite we I even tend to say like I think you should mm-hmm. yeah. or how about do you think you should rather and you kind of turn it around mm, rather than how do you feel this makes this work or yeah so yeah. that's kind of like relating I'm thinking back to just language mm-hmm. being mm-hmm. conscious of your language and how you interact with people you know you could say um the sky is blue and what does that mean or you could be like the sky is um big and bold and that also means something i don't know you know what i'm trying mm-hmm. to say like you can say things differently and just have a different interpret g- have a different reaction Being to something full of the words you use yes there absolutely. you go absolutely <laughs> exactly like es- <laughs> especially when we're talking about like service yeah because like the words that service providers use can shape so much for youth and children that are in care and yeah. part of this population. The words we use are so crucial to maintaining that person's functionality, yeah. Ma- like making them still function really well. But do they teach you that in your yeah social yeah work oh yeah for sure I'm gonna right. can I but give an example oh you go ahead and I'll sorry. give an example after no nope. <laughs> I just I just roll. wanted to finish and say like it goes the other way as well because you can it it is your right to be have and get respect from or it from your workers yep. however if you are not reciprocating if you're not doing the same if you're bad mouthing and yelling and and saying all these negative things to your worker yeah like although her role is to be supportive and encouraging you know it 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 goes hand in hand right um yeah i was just going to mention something that i learned a couple of weeks ago um in terms of language and removing stigma in ter- um, relating to mental health so they were talking about, um, let's say, random name, Sam. Sam has, um, Sam is, instead of saying, for example, Sam is an addict, you would say Sam is someone who, struggles. It, um, you wouldn't even say struggles, you would say Sam is someone who has lived experience with substance use. And that kind of just changes how you look at that person. Instead mm-hmm. of labeling them as an addict, you you say this is someone who, yes, subconsciously you know that they're struggling with that, um, substance use misuse then you instead you're saying sam is someone who has lived experiences with substance use or misuse or you know talking about even just suicide that's kind of a deep taking a dark deep um yeah. toll on this conversation but suicide instead of saying you know they died by suicide or death by suicide it's kind of saying that um or even just saying okay this is i think this is a good one um you know they failed at their attempt at suicide you would say you know you're, you're, you're labeling suicide as being, you know, life is um, failure, death is success. So instead of putting it in that way, you'd be saying things like... Being mindful of your... Yeah, so they had a non-fail, non-fatal suicide attempt. And just kind of to change it, I mean, it's kind of dark there, but <laughs> it's just, yeah, be, as workers, being conscious of the language that you use. So that you're, you're not, sti- like... You know, you're not part of the stigmatization, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. That's actually uh, one of the very first articles we actually receive in social work. It's called um, The Art of Doublespeak. Yeah. Or The Action of Doublespeak. Yeah. But basically, it's talking for, like, service providers and maintaining, like, not using those labels. So talking, if you're talking domestic violence, um, saying, like, wife beater, Right. You know, that at one time was the call. That was what it was called. And then it was called, you know, um, 
uh, violence against women. But now they're saying it's intimate partner violence. Intimate so partner th- violence. it has gone through so many different names and so many different labels because who qualifies as like being counted in that each time they, you know, increase yeah. that bracket, the name's kind of changing. Yeah. So those kinds of things, yeah, it's very important that we work on reframing those thoughts yeah. and those words. Exactly. I think we can probably go on and on and on. Oh, yes. We're going to move on to our community <laughs> connection. This week, our community connection is McDonald Youth Services, and you can find them at 175 Mayfair Avenue or online, www.mys.ca. And we chose this particular connection to share with you all. Number one reason, um, they provide Indigenous initiatives. They have a program called Indigenous Initiatives. They have a lot of other services like youth crisis services, family supports, healing homes, foster homes, skills for life. Um, So keeping in mind that November is Indigenous Peoples Awareness Month, we want to share the awesome program that MYS offers. Um, indigenous initiatives. So this is taken directly from their website, of course. The program aims to connect youth to skills, knowledge, traditional languages, experiences, and land-based practices that are essential to the healing journal, sorry, healing journey for indigenous families. And it's critical um, in helping to shape a child's identity and sense of belonging. So it aims to guide youth with their relationships with Mother Earth, Father Sky, and the program basically um, they do a lot of um, ceremonial sites with youth fa- and their families or just, you know, youth um, and the community. Um, they also do land-based summer camps, which is new. So they do a lot of blending of ceremony and traditional teachings. They do training opportunities and weekly Indigenous teachings to help build knowledge and awareness throughout the community. And then they also do just regular ceremonies um, that would include purification lodge, full moon ceremonies, water ceremonies, pipe ceremonies, solstice ceremonies, young men and women sharing circles and medicine picking and so much more. Um, And then just recently, um, this month, they have launched a free walk-in counseling services for youth ages 13 to 29. They are drop in. So kind of like first first come first serve those that are 13 years of age to 15 years of age you do require parental or or guardian consent to be able to receive services but still it's pretty awesome Um, drop-in sessions are from three to seven so i strongly suggest those that are interested to check them out definitely Mm. worth worth your while this is mcdonald youth services yeah huh neat yeah i mean they offer so much more but definitely those two are ones that they're not on portage anymore right no no. they moved a long time ago all right so our song break that we're going to share with you all um this artist um she's known as birth name is beverly her artist name is buffy saint marie and her music is specialized in a political and social activist um focus um she was born in piapo cree first nation reserve near regina saskatchewan and you may have seen or heard her voice on sesame street for those that are fans of sesame street um episodes from 1976 to 1981 she's involved in so much more but my favorite um that i got to read up up, uh, up on her about was the cradle board teaching project of 1997 and this project was devoted to self-identity and self-esteem in the present and future generations of indigenous children i mean the list goes on but this one i i really liked um because sh- you know 1997 that was not that long ago But, I mean, it can feel like a long time ago, but she started, a lot of her work is all about self-identity, self-esteem, being proud of who you are, where you come from. And she wanted this uh, project for, you know, future Indigenous children. So, I mean, you could always, you know, go to your, our best friend Google and research on your own and discover her amazing work. But um, the work that we're going to share with you today is a song called Sing Our Own Song. Uh, We hope you enjoy And we'll see you after the break on System Kids. Brothers and 
Welcome back. What did you guys think of that song? I thought it was awesome. Shli? Great, wonderful. Love indigenous music. I love the drums. Yeah. Love it. Hopefully we can broadcast some more of her work throughout the month or throughout the year that y- you all listeners have with me and Kaylee, or with Kaylee and I. <laughs> We're going to move on to our child welfare in the news. 
this is an important one and a recent one for that matter. And um, Kaylee's going to give you guys some insight on on the article we found and relevance to youth in care. Yeah, so today we are going to be talking about, um, so CBC released an article called um, Agencies Are Really Struggling, High Caseloads, Lack of Staff, and Long Waits for Treatment. So that's like a really long title, but um, it represents a reality of our city social services um, that spread across pretty much all of Manitoba and all of Canada. Um, It is a story that is we're hearing over and over again, and and yet there's not much to address or not much to um, say they've done to help out the situation without... Anyway, so West Region Child and Family Services is currently struggling to keep up with, or so they say, they're struggling to keep up with demand for services for children um, in care because they state that it's because of lack of staff, high caseloads, and long wait times for counseling and treatments. Um, And I'm sure we've all heard something similar to this at one point or another. Um... But these cases are increasing and increasing um, with the limited prevention programs, overworked staff, and uh, with many children to support and having lots of paperwork. They're like really busy. These factors have created a large burnout rate with social service um, representatives. And basically what a burnout means is that you feel exhausted and overwhelmed, um, maybe even powerless due to being overworked. And this is a high issue for service providers, social workers, and stuff like that. Um, So the West Region Child and Family Services go on in the article to talk about how they're not receiving enough funding. And with the new funding that's occurring um it's actually affecting very poorly affecting um their ability to serve um the executive director stella bone had actually said well there was two things that she said one thing was why why is this on the backs of our children and why not on theirs meaning the state Mm -hmm. um or (laughs) meaning the government um And I think that that's important because the funding, it limits the services available for children in care and what we can do for them and their families. They believe that this new model of funding encourages apprehending children rather than providing family supports and assistance to address the families and their unique challenges. In the article, providing support related to addictions and mental health was listed as very important and extremely lacking um so i know that that was a lot of information (laughs) and i apologize for that um it's just it is an it is something that is so what is the word it it crucial yes yes um um, i don't know like it's a crisis that needs to be addressed Mm -hmm. and it shouldn't be a crisis and and she had like some really good some some insights into this that i thought was very interesting so could you share a little bit about that um well there's a community that i've been a part of um over the years since i've been a an adult that's aged out of cfs myself and um the last time i was at a place called the turtle lodge there was like um paintings on the walls of um indigenous people and non-indigenous people making um sharing knowledge with each other trying to teach the non-indigenous peoples about alternative methods of um approaching addictions and mental health issues with um indigenous based understandings and very going back to like a very simplistic way of living so i think within regards to addictions and mental health being like an important thing and how it says here in the article extremely lacking Mm -hmm. I think it needs to be an implementation of um, going back to like simple ways of living with um, tribal understandings amongst indigenous people because they lived with 
um, in harmony with the land versus how other cultures and races did like a long time ago. Their understandings of that was very, <coughs> they knew, you know, like if you go to a lodge and you go to a sweat lodge, I think there needs to be like the mental health system needs to start taking into consideration that maybe Indigenous people that even though we don't understand some of the ways that they do things, maybe it's valuable. Maybe we should start taking that into consideration mm -hmm. and impl implementing their their way of ceremony and um, how they do things into our, maybe not eradicate one or the other, but start mm -hmm. integrating both of them to work together with pharmacare and the mental health system. So basically take the best of both worlds yeah. and create a new kind of work together versus yeah. disregarding and I think that's a huge part of truth and reconciliation healing. And one of the big questions <coughs> when when things like that are brought up is do you think that that's possible? Do you I think do you over think time if people can stop fearing the unknown of some of the ceremonial understandings and because that's I know that there's still a lot of stigma around that and some people are like I, I have friends that are scared of the idea of going to sweat lodge and I've even gotten anxiety myself. I've had mm -hmm. experiences in there that I couldn't explain and people were, so it's, <laughs> it's, um, even, you know, just talking about lack of funding, you know, a lot of participants that we've come into contact with, they've talked about having culturally appropriate resources provided to them. Right. And so with lack of funding, that's going <coughs> to take that away. But you don't need money to, help a person you just have to have a heart and like yeah simple understandings of the natural world and but that you know pharma pharma care and the mental health system is very I feel like the way that their system is it's kind of black and white and they're not very like a rainbow within their um their their linguistics are mm -hmm. different to indigenous people so well we're talking about power right yeah. um <clears throat> And you're talking about a bunch of systems. Um, right. And there's and power and disempowerment yeah. within those systems. So Absolutely. How do and we start integrating the two? How do you find your power within those systems? Right. 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 How do you individually find your power as you think here or as workers, right? If you're going to be having lack of funding, lack of this, lack of that, how do you find your power through it all? Hmm. I don't think that there's one answer I think there's a lot of answers um but I think that it was important to just yeah like point out that within these systems it is very easy for people uh, that are not within the system to feel uh like underappreciated or not as powerful as they could be you know if you've been waiting in a uh, ER for seven hours while you're seeing people going in, going in, going in, and y you know you're sitting there and you're like, I've been waiting this whole time. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if you are a different skin color or you are a different minority of some sort, or you know, it's very easy for our thoughts to be like, oh, it's because of this, right? It's because of this belief of me and my people, and 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 that's disempowering right mm -hmm. but that's almost disempowering yourself because you don't know if that's why you've been waiting seven hours mm -hmm. but you 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 believe it you internalize what society has yeah said about so i think that are. i think there's a certain level of education that needs to happen i think one we need to understand that we play a part in it too mm -hmm. right we put these ideas and expectations on ourselves and others just as much as other people do maybe not as much as some others but and that is completely linked with your power and what to do with your power i don't know no it makes sense i agree does that Absolutely. does that make sense or am i just no, rattling on and sense. on and on no i think <laughs> i think there could be more said about that though but of course it's it's a process right you can't yeah nobody has all the answers so yeah you can just throw ideas out there and be like we should try this or mm -hmm. yeah and <clears throat> and it takes somebody in the system to say let's try it mm -hmm. you know because we can come up with all these fabulous ideas mm -hmm. but there is a lack of communication between all our amazing ideas and getting results right. so we need someone in the middle there 
like that, an intermediary yeah <laughs> yeah be like we should try this you guys should like and as silly as this sounds i think the person that's supposed to be doing that a is trudeau and b is our mps like right those are supposed to be our connectors to the systems and everything i'm not a political person i don't really understand <laughs> that stuff right. before this turns into a political conversation <laughs> we're gonna move on to our weather I hate reading out weather because, oh, you know, sometimes I'm like, is that, you know, it gets me a little <laughs> depressed. Kaylee, you want to? Yeah, sure. Uh, so tonight we're me. going down to minus 12. Um, tomorrow we're going up to minus 5. Um, and I'm going to skip a couple days. Saturday, <laughs> Sunday, and Monday, we are in the, the positives. Saturday's plus 2, Sunday's plus 1, and Monday's plus 1. Is that warm? That's, yeah. you know, well, it's not minus sense. 20, so <laughs> yeah. it's warm. Yeah, It's got a plus symbol beside it. I'm happy. And a, and a little sun, and it's yellow. So Absolutely. That's, that's good to see. So one thing that we really wanted to um, mention before we completely move on um, into our, our next important segment um, on education, on power, um, is that article was at least for myself um what i felt it meant for youth and care you know it means so much first just the lack of funding it means there's going to be less eprs less staffing decrease in mental health supports less one-on-ones less culturally appropriate resources more opportunity to be treated fairly and i wanted to mention those particularly just because these are um statements that i have heard from time and time again just you know, being meeting with participants, and I just really wanted to voice that out. Um, so, Kaylee actually has um, some important information for you all, and just to give you more of an idea of what power, what you know, or what power is, what it means to us as workers, what it means to youth and care. Um, we didn't have a chance to actually talk more about this in our last um, in last week, so we kind of just wanted to leave you with a bit of food for thought. Uh, so, Kaylee, you want to go ahead? Yeah. Okay. So this is kind of the educational portion of the evening. Um, I just want to basically give you a Sparks Notes version of what we are talking about over the next month. So in the simplest definition I could find, power means the ability to do something or act in a certain way. Empower so those are two different things. Empower is to make someone stronger and more confident, especially in controlling their life and claiming their rights. So those are often the more areas of... <laughs> yeah. Um, so often when we feel stressed or beaten down we or we feel torn down, it is very overwhelming um this feeling goes by many names for us it implies being powerless or having your power removed can i just say you know power isn't doesn't necessarily have to be a physical thing it doesn't have to do with your strength and physical ability oh right. yes that should definitely be noted you maybe you're saying like yeah yeah I, like I'm sorry in your cat or something mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah no, exactly <laughs> no I am um, sorry I should note that for sure power is not something necessarily physical it doesn't work when we say power we're not talking about imaginary powers we're not talking about your physical strength we are not talking about you know oh if you're president of the world you must have all the power mm -hmm. um there are so many different things that go into one's power um and yeah so what we're more talking about is yeah your your ability to be confident your ability to like connect with your resources and your knowledge um basically overcome your, your barriers overcome your barriers yes exactly so what happens to kids when they when the pressure starts to build so basically youth in care or any other kids even adults they begin to feel powerless over their choices their identities and their futures mm -hmm. and it can feel as though they don't have a voice or input into their own lives that they don't have control um and this 
lack of this this perceived so feeling like they do not have this power maybe like shaming them as well like oh absolutely that would reduce somebody's sense of power empowerment Mm -hmm. yeah like being prejudiced against being or yet like being having judges invalidating their experience saying it wasn't as bad as yeah no that's a really good point invalidating i like that one yeah um Yes, that's a big problem, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> especially when you're trying to, like, advocate for yourself, which is maybe outside of the norm for you, and then somebody's telling you to, like, mm-hmm. sit down and be quiet, basically. Like, oh, that makes say, you feel pretty powerless. I mm-hmm. can say from personal experience, I've actually had that happen. Yep. And then realizing years later, I'm like, that's why I was so resentful for so long. Yep. And, and then trying to get over it. And well, no, and that's, that is exactly <laughs> good. <laughs> that's going to affect good your bringing up. journey. Yeah. Good right? bringing yes. up because yeah. that perceived, so in, what, how you saw that lack of power in that moment right. triggered a negative triggered negative emotions and it, it um just, yeah and this affects a youth's sense or your sense of self-esteem mm-hmm. and right. overall mental health but that's not just a me thing this does happen oh no no, no. yeah absolutely like, no stop, i stop invalidating what they're telling you <laughs> well there's so many things that they can be doing to better um power empower Empower their clients and invalidating is definitely a good example Mm -hmm. um because it it tells somebody that basically your voice doesn't need to be heard or that's how it is perceived that's how it's seen as oh they don't care what i want to say they don't Mm -hmm. care trying not to project your own issues onto them exactly yeah (laughs) yeah so this kind of brings you to what can we do to help youth in care who are experiencing powerlessness powerlessness or even just wanting to learn about power um so i'm just going to name a couple of things so first what we can do is we can help uncover the layers um of what they're feeling and kind of breaking those down Mm -hmm. um when problems seem really big it can be extremely overwhelming and it can feel like too far of a stretch so it really helps to break those down um, break down goals, break down tasks, any of those things, and so that they're easier to resolve and you feel happier because you're you're checking things off much quicker. Right. So, and so yeah, they breaking them down and breaking down what they're worried about too. You know, um, are we talking about almost like making lists? Yeah, to absolutely. To, to help good. to help someone to identify like the steps, mm-hmm, that like you pros take. and yeah. cons list, yeah. totally. Or you know, say for example, I am, I okay, oh, I don't have an example. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> like one you- of my stressful things in my house is my house and its cleanliness. Mm-hmm. I, for the life of me, cannot keep my house clean and then it's so overwhelming and I feel so stressed out and like I have no power against the amount of mess that is there um but if I break it down room by room box by box dish by dish first off I get to make a whole lot of checks because I got about (laughs) 700 dishes and then uh and and yeah things actually get done because it feels more manageable um so that can really help youth uh, feel more power within their lives and their ability to affect change. Um, I want to add, um, just talking about the house, the house example, you know, um, okay, yeah, just basically just to add, um, your house is your the example, right? So the, mm-hmm. you have your house, you're in the house, and I'm thinking about, like, if you're someone... Uh, like you're saying yourself, the mess is like uh, where you feel powerless, right? Asking those around you to help, right? Mm-hmm. So trying to paint a picture here. So like, you know, if you're someone yeah. that is feeling powerless, looking at what's around you, whether it's resources, people, um, friends, family, whoever it is, and asking for help. And asking is a tool to get you to feel powerful, so. right? Do you know what I'm trying to so say? Like so, like, almost empowering yourself enough to help yeah, having, others to help yeah. you feel more empowered so you can empower others. More. Yeah, and finding <laughs> that, you know, it can take just that little bit of strength, that little bit of extra energy of just being like, I got to ask someone for help mm-hmm. so that I can get to that point where I need to feel powerful. Right. Or, you know, 
help this person I need to ask this person to help me with let's say doing the dishes using yeah. the house example so that I can not feel powerless right yeah and just you know just yeah just I think it's important to note though that not everyone is ready in their healing journey to right. be able to reach out for help right. um and that's when you know that's when we need to be looking at those nonverbal cues and yeah. you know really asking are you okay do yeah. you have someone to talk with do you want you know go to voices and have a conversation to talk with, exactly right? yeah. do you want to talk about this yeah you know um because like at least for myself i wasn't ready to ask for help until i was like 22 years old yeah we I mean, think so, about it this way i'm thinking like as we're like talking about this um think about a balloon and you're blowing air into it and the air is, you know, symbolizing your barriers, all the things that are making you feel powerless. And you don't want to get to the point where you explode mm -hmm. and you're just flying everywhere, right? Can I add something in regards to... Of course you can. Um, from personal experience, I know that being like a former kid in care and dealing with like my own mental health issues in the past, like um, my way, I've noticed like if I, if I see someone struggling or hurting with like feeling powerless or something, and if they're like totally down in the dumps what I've noticed just from personal experience like over the years is like when someone's like feeling not empowered yeah. it's almost like you have to do a backwards method and humble yourself to them and be like you must know something like mm -hmm. you must like empower them and acknowledge that they have in their own insight to maybe pull them out of their powerlessness I don't know mm -hmm. does that make sense yep yeah and I, I I'm going to try to post this on our Facebook page um <clears throat> but it, you know, I just want to read it out, <laughs> read it out um, uh, beforehand. So simple ways to go from powerless to powerful. So these are methods that we can help other people do, or these are methods that we can do ourselves to feel more confident, but also to feel more power and help increase that ability to make yourself feel powerful. Cause that is, a, that is some, that takes a lot of practice. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. So number one, say yes just say yes you don't always have to say no number two learn to kindly say no you don't always have to say yes if you're one of those people that always says yes it is okay it's your right to say no uh three what's within your control learn what is in within within your control don't you know if you don't have control over something that has nothing to do with you let it go don't force it don't force it nope agreed um be grateful that that's gratitude be show thankfulness because that is a way you feel powerful is by being grateful um talk through tough stuff with trusted individuals come to voices talk with us share don't keep it bottled in because that will keep you bottled in mm. um believe that you can make something better believe that you have the ability to make change um going back to what Schley said reframing that's a big one reframing the words and the ways we think of things right. whether we're talking suicide addictions mental health language changing our words not using labels um thinking twice thinking twice yeah <laughs> second guess yourself like so many mm -hmm. people second guess others you know, maybe we need to second guess ourselves just from a little bit more from time to time. Yeah, to be accountable. Exactly. And so this shift with empowering kids, it helps them gain that inner confidence, courage and strengthens to successful lives. Um, it helps them learn how to navigate around obstacles that may arise while being in care um, or in schools like bullies or poor grades, um, making a mistake. You know, stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, just make sure you're asking for help when you need it. You're opening up when you feel you need to. And know that it's your right to make a mistake. It is okay to make mistakes. It's just what you do after you make that mistake that where it really matters. Amazing words spoken by amazing my amazing coworker. Oh, um so we have reached the end of our hour with you all we hope you were able to we hope we were able to spark something new into your day 
Um, just wanted to give a shout out to our amazing young ladies that are part of our Voices fam, Serenity and Tum Tum. And then I just want to thank Sh- Shalee for being on air with us today. Your insight and your input is always thank you. a pleasure. Um, so...